Now, during our lecture classes, what we'll be doing, you each have a booklet, and on the left page of the booklet, usually, and then sometimes on the right, we'll be going over the topics and you'll be taking notes that I'll be listing here as part of our lecture lessons. So the first topic, and keep in mind this is material that you'll be doing in Math Lab as you do your homework, your practice, your quiz me's, and you are allowed to use these booklets for that. And you're going to keep a record in your homework lab log as well as you write the practice problems out and the quiz me's and then eventually your test. Now there is a protocol that I'll be telling you about as we do these, but here we're going to concentrate on the lecture notes. And again, if you were to read your textbook, there's an online lecture of it as well that I've done. It gives you the general background, but this is sort of a outline, a condensed form of what would take many pages of textbook material to cover. So, to start us off, what I'd like you to do right here is to write this over there, a to the n, and what does this mean? Well, the a is the base and the n is the exponent. So this is what you're writing down in your booklet over on the left. This will be background information. Now, what does this mean? Well, if we have the case of a 3, and you could write this down too, and 3 would be the base, and 2 would be the exponent, it means you're going to write the base as a factor, the exponent number of times, 2. And then you just do the multiplication and you get the simplification of 9. Now as we look at another example, they're showing us here the base happens to be a negative 5 because it's included within the parentheses, And it's to the third power. That is, you're going to take this base and write it as a factor three times. Now, some little rules is, if you have a negative and you're going to multiply that negative three times, that is an odd number of times, your end sign will be negative. And then 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Now, if this were a 4, like we see down here, if it were a negative 5 raised to the fourth power, that would end up being a positive sign. When you have negative included in a parenthesis that you're going to raise to a power, if it's odd, your answer will always be negative. If the exponent is even, the answer is always positive. Okay, and then using a fraction, what does that mean? Again, it's the whole fraction taken as a factor four times to give you 1 over 16. Now, this is from another textbook that I have. And, uh, but it's very useful to go over the rules. Let's raise it up a little. Now, on the left, I do want you to write these rules down. The product rule. When you have a variable, we write it out here big, a to the m, that would be some exponent, times a, the bases are the same, to an exponent, n, let's say, 
the rule is we just add the exponents. So this is called the product rule. Now many of you may know this, but again, by having it in your notes, and by the way, if you read the textbook online, as you read it and take notes in this booklet, that would be perfectly fine. In fact, I would be impressed by that. This is what we'd like you to do. So an example would be x to the second times x to the seventh. The bases are the same. We just add the exponents and you get x to the ninth. Now, a different rule, and unfortunately it starts with a P also, it's called the power rule. Now, the power rule, we're taking something inside a parenthesis with an exponent and raising it to an exponent. So, what this means is, for instance, if we had 5 to the third and my 3 didn't come out too well so I wrote it again and so 5 to the third raised to the third power that means that this factor is used three times so using the product rule here we can see that this would be 5 to the ninth just adding them but in this shorthand method, when we use the power rule, the shortcut way would be multiply your exponents. So that's what they're showing here. 5 to the third raised to the eighth would be 5 to the 3 times 8, 5 to the 24th power. Now, some little sub things that relate to this when you see two variables and they have it to a power then if you took away the parenthesis that exponent would go by each of the factors inside the parenthesis so it would look like this so again write this one down and we can pause a little bit Now the quotient rule, which is the power of a quotient rule, a quotient by definition is a fraction. Well, again, if you have an, an exponent to the outside, that exponent applies to each of the parts of your quotient. The upper part, the numerator, the bottom part, the denominator, and it looks like this. And there would be an example. Now, the quotient rule for dealing with fractions, in a sense, that are variables or numbers that have exponents, the rule in general is you take the smaller value of the exponent let's say it's the n, and as it crosses the division bar, the sign of the exponent changes. Here it's a positive, then it becomes a negative. So if in multiplication we added, in division we will subtract. And those are important rules. And then another one you'll run across is the zero exponent. Let me show you how that works. If I had a to the third divided by a to the third, we know anything other than zero divided by itself is equal to one, right? Anything divided by itself is one. Well, if we use the quotient rule though, bring up our negative 3 or bring up our 3 and as it gets there becomes a negative 3 this then becomes a to the 0 power and a to the 0 power as they are defining 
is 1. And again, as long as the A is not a 0. Okay. So these are the basic rules that you've put on your left page of your booklet. And now as we solve these examples, some of them will be classwork, some of them we'll do together. And again, a key thing in all of this is anytime you have a question, just let me know. We can pause and I will repeat and review and we want you to be able to say I can walk away with the knowledge that I've gained from the lecture. Now as we do these examples, some of them can be right on the page where there are. I've made a, a new program here where I've separated them so there's a little bit more space. Yours are jammed up a little bit. So anything you want to write on the left, that's why we kept that page free. And keep in mind this booklet as a notebook will be 5% of your end of term grade. It's based on your attendance as you come into class, participate in the lecture, and ask your questions and hopefully through practice then and you'll be writing practice in your homework lab log and that will be checked and that is the other five percent of your end of term grade which is your ten percent of notebook and I will be going over the general grading in class. Okay, so looking at this one, we're going to use the product rule where we just, since the bases are the same, we get the results m to the 11th. All right, we'll give you a few moments then of class time to work on these next three, and then we'll go over them. So as you look at these, now for numbers, we just multiply them. But for exponents, if the bases are the same, we just add the exponents. Now when there is no number of an exponent by a letter, there is a 1 that we don't write. Now here we're bringing the 2 up and subtracting it from the 4. And that gives us r to the second. Here we're doing the division. 2 goes into 10, 5. And then the subtraction. Okay, let's go on. Now in example 2, we're just going to take this value and substitute it for the x in each of these. So take a moment and do that as well. Now, interestingly, the answers to these would all be the same, whether you put the 4.6 in there or not. But they are showing you a couple of things. So let's do this. So anything to the zero power is 1. And that would be x to the zero as well. Now here, this is the tricky part. What is the base here? Here, the base, and it's for the x as well, is just the x. It's just this and not the negative. So this to the zero power is 1. But then we have to apply this negative. So this one, in this form or this form, is negative 1. Now, notice the difference here. What is the base here? The base is what is included in the parentheses. Because of the parentheses, this is just a 1. So, three cases showing you the slight difference. Here is the tricky part. 
that you might say, oh, it's x to the zero power or this to the zero power. That part is zero. I'm sorry, that part is one, but then you apply the negative. So this is a negative one. And again, I hate to see a student make an error on this. They sort of got the idea, but you have to be careful. All right, let's go on. Now, a little background on this before we actually start doing them. If we had a to the third and a to the fifth, and we were going to use that rule we just went over, that would then be a to the fifth that we brought up, and that would be a to the third minus five, would then give us a to the negative two. Okay, now let's look at this another way. a to the third over a to the fifth. Now keep in mind there's a one in front of everything, we just don't write it. That if we bring this value down to the bottom, the one stays up on the top, but this now becomes a to the fifth and once it crosses the division bar, the exponent becomes a negative, changes its sign, and we get 1 over a to the second. So we then have this and this, which are right here. So a to the negative 2 equals 1 over a to the second. These are equivalent. And the basic rule is, as you move something across the division bar, the sign of the exponent changes. So moving this up to the numerator, the sign of that denominator, exponents, change. Ah. All right, keeping that in mind, good little rule and then they want us to simplify if we can here. So, this is going to be 1 over 5 to the second, which will then become 1 25th. Now, because the base is in a parenthesis, you can think of the 1 being out there, Moving that down to the denominator becomes 1 over a negative 5 to the second. And negative 5 times negative 5, even exponent, this becomes 1 25th. And you're fitting it in wherever you can. Now here's a tricky part. Is the base here 3x or just the x? And the answer is it's just the x. So the 3 stays on top, the y to the fourth stays on top, and the x to the negative 6 goes down to the bottom as a positive 6. And this one the 6 to the negative 2 just goes up to the top and simplified is 36. So you'll be getting some practice on this and then later your quiz me and then later your test. All right, now here we're asked to use the powers rule where we're going to take the exponents and multiply them. So this is 3 to the 8th. And we could leave it that way or put that in our calculator and get a value. Because they are asking us to simplify. So that at 6,561. Now here, the rules of signs apply we're going to get y equals a negative 18, but they want only positive exponents. 
So this will become 1 over y to the 18th. Now here, again, the rules of multiplication apply. A negative times a negative makes this a positive 12. Now, as you probably already realize, the answers are down below, so we can always check them. Here, we're going to use the product rule and simplify these. So a negative 3 squared is a positive 9. And remember, there's a 1 there that we're going to multiply by the 2, x to the second. Now, since this is all negative exponent, if we get a negative exponent, we can put some things already in our denominator to make them positive. So this is a negative 25 to the negative 2 power. We bring that down to the denominator as a positive 25. So it comes down to the denominator as, in parentheses, a negative 5 squared now in the denominator. In the numerator, it would have been a negative 2. We brought it down. It's a positive 2. Okay, now this is a 4, x to the 4th times a negative 2. That's going to be x to the negative 8 in the numerator but we bring it down to the denominator as a positive. Now, again, the rules apply. Negative times negative makes this a positive 6. And that's the answer. Now, you could have done it in two stages. We're just taking a little bit of a shortcut. Now, here we have x to the fourth raised to the third, which will give us x to the twelfth. And then we have three raised to the third. And that's three times three times three is 27. Now again, we have some that are negative and some that are positive. So let's see if we can put them in their place. This will be z to the second raised to the negative 3. Well, that'll be a negative 6 in the numerator. So let's put it right down in the denominator as z to the sixth. Now, 4, we could do this one, or we can do that one. Let's do this one. This will be y. Negative times negative makes it a positive, a positive 9. Now, 4 to the negative 3 in our denominator would make that 4 to the negative 3. But if we move it up to our numerator, it becomes 4 to a positive 3 up here, which is 64. And that was the solution. Now, in converting to scientific or in a sense, standard notation. We're looking at things here. This is scientific notation, and so is this one. And this is standard, or they're calling it decimal notation, here. Now the rule is, we take whatever number we have in standard notation and make it a number between 1 and 10. We then times it by some power of 10. So taking this, putting it into a number between 1 and 10, then timesing it by some power of 10. Another observation, in fact, let me put the 10 right there. We're going to then indicate some exponent to which we raise the power of 10. Now, what do we do? Well, it all depends on the number of digits 
or decimal places that we move something to. So here we have 45 million. We want to make that number a number between 1 and 10. So my decimal is here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to raise it to the 7th power. And my number is 4.5. So I changed it from a standard number to a number between 1 and 10. And I kept track of the number of places that I had to move the decimal point because that will be the exponent to which I raise 10. This is now in scientific notation. Now notice it's a big number, so my exponent is positive. Now for small numbers, basically the same rule except as you move it to the right, the decimal, these are negative values up here. So let's check it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I lost track. So I moved it 8 places to the right, so the exponent here will be a negative 8. Now my number between 1 and 10 will be 5, let's see, get my pen going, 7.58. And again, you'll have other examples to do. Again, if it's a big number, there'll be positive exponents. How many places did you move the decimal place to make it a number between 1 and 10? And a small number, it's going to be negative exponents. How many places did you move the decimal to make it a number between 1 and 10? Now, for converting it back to the other kind, we have the number 5 here. Now, where's the decimal point? Right there. Now, since this says negative 5, how many places do I have to move the decimal point? Well, I have to move it 5. Well, this counts as 1, so now I have to add 4 zeros. So I can move it 5 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's where the decimal place goes. And we usually add a 0 to fix the decimal place there. Okay, here it's 7, and my number is 1.234. How many decimal places do I have to move it over? Well, I look at the exponent on 10, and it's 7. So here I would move it 3, so I need to add 4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I move it over 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now here I don't have to add a 0. So I've converted then items that were in scientific notation. If it was a negative exponent, it's going to be a small number. If it's a positive exponent, it's going to be a big number. And you move the decimal place equal to the exponent. If it's negative, you move it to the left. If it's positive, you move it to the right. Okay, now let's take a look at our last example. Now, in the textbook, they mention what are called significant digits. So, how many significant digits do I have in this first example? Well, it's what we see here, 1.4. That's the significant digits. There are two. And how about here? Three, uh, 2.3. Two significant digits. Now, since there are decimals, and as we multiply these, 
we're going to get the answer 3.22 and then now we're going to do these where we're going to just add our exponents times 10 to the ninth and they're asking us to put our answer in scientific notation. Now my question is how many significant digits do I have here? Well I now have three significant digits but I started off with two and two there. So where this would be a, in a sense a better answer they're moving toward this significant digits. I can't have in my answer any more significant digits than I had in the lowest number of significant digits I started with. Well this one had two. This one had two. So the lowest number is two. So in my answer I can only have two significant digits. So this will then convert to accidentally put that line there uh, 3.2 times 10 to the ninth. Now if this were a 6 I would drop the 6 and make this a 3. But since it's a 2 I drop it and just take my two significant digits as my answer. Okay, this is critical because they're sort of interested in that. All right, now what we're going to do here is divide 4.2 divided by this and let's get an answer. Well, I get 1.13207547272, and it keeps going on. So the point being, I have to look at how many significant digits do I have. Well, I have two in my numerator, three in my denominator. So what's the fewest number here? The fewest number is 2. So I have to look here and say what would my answer be if I only had two significant digits in my answer? Well I'd look at this place here, the hundreds. If it were 5 or more I would make this a 6. But since it's less than 5, I just drop these and all of them. And my answer becomes, for significant digits, 1.1 times. Now, here this is a positive 5 exponent. When I bring it up, it becomes a negative 5. So this would be times 10 to the negative 11. And that's the answer they have down below. So this completes our first lesson. Uh, I do have some other things we'll be doing in class, but I'll be looking at what you've done to, in a sense, visually check your notes for today.